Um, delighted to welcome to IBC 2018, Jean Dobezic. He's from Igalia, which is actually a Spanish-based company, and he'll be telling you all about WPE. All right, good morning everyone. I hope you've had as good a start at IBC as I have. A bit of hectic, but really good. Uh, my name is Jean Dobershek. I work for Igalia. Uh, it's a Spanish consultancy company based in La Coruña, Galicia, the northwest of Spain. We have a stand just to the right of here, uh, D29. You're most welcome to come and give us a visit. I'll be talking about the WPE. This is an adaptable web engine um, that is uh, mostly appropriate for embedding in native applications on a variety of hardware, and uh, one that is capable to cover various use cases. I'm going to first take you a bit through the origins of the project uh, and the current status. Uh, we started off in um, uh, just with some basics. Uh, it's a port, WP is a port of the WebKit uh, web engine. Uh, a port means that uh, there are specific platform, uh, uh, platform bits uh, that glue to the hardware, uh, but that it shares a lot of the web standards implementation with, uh, with other ports inside the WebKit project. Uh, one of these ports is uh, used uh, extensively in Safari and is available throughout the iOS and Mac OS devices. Uh, this is a port that is actively developed by Apple and is used most, um, most prominently in Safari. But there are other ports as well there um, uh, chiming in the, into the WebKit project and uh, contributing uh, most commonly by managing their own ports, WPE being one of them. Uh, the project itself started um, four years ago uh, in 2014. It was first named WebKit for Wayland. Wayland here being a, um, a, um, a window management system that was pretty new at the time. Uh, the name was poorly chosen. There are some funny stories about that. Uh, and in my opinion, it was, as it was soon observed, it was too narrow-minded uh, because uh, it targeted only that window management system. While we later realized that we could, uh, we could, uh, we could uh, work against a much broader, um, broader uh, uh, set of tools and uh, systems. But at the time, it was factual, though now abandoned and wish it was forgotten. Um, soon after that, we simplified it and rebranded as WPE. And we've had the, the major luck of it being adopted uh, by Metrological, a local company here from Rotterdam. Um, as such, it, ha it gained immediate exposure in the set-top box market, where Metrological has most of its focus. Um, and Metrological actually took WPE uh, as a core of their own uh, product uh, and expanded that into the web platform for embedded project. Um, today, it's a WPE on its own is a vibrant part of the upstream WebK.org project. Uh, we are working there, um, uh, adding new features and improvements. Uh, and we've uh, managed to branch out into other platforms and use cases. Uh, for also, um, uh, on top of set of boxes, we are now seeing the port used both uh, in home appliances, in flight, and in vehicle infotainment systems, as well as applications in the digital signage um, uh, area. I'll dip a bit into the technicalities now. Um, just a few slides, so no worries. Um, in, uh, in a short description, WPE is not bound to any specific uh, platform-specific toolkit or, um, or any specific environment. Uh, instead, we focused on providing a backend infrastructure that, um, that enables users and adopters to perform easy integration uh, with various platforms and with various uh, pieces of hardware. 
um, the uh, main um, uh, the main dependency or um, the main um, uh, necessity here is the EGL um, is the yeah the EGL um, specification uh, that needs to be supported by the uh, by the um, by the given hardware environment. Uh, this is primarily used for uh, web content composition. Uh, but in addition, um, the final visual output can be um, can be used in an adjustable fashion. Uh, it can be very adaptable to various uh, display management systems, window management system systems, uh, Wayland mentioned before being one of them. Uh, or the content, the visual output itself can be embedded into other um, EGL environments. Um, as far as architecture support goes, um, we support uh, uh, we focus uh, on supporting the broader broadest possible uh, hardware architectures that are in use today. Uh, th these three being uh, MIPS, ARM version 7, and ARM version 64 uh, architectures. Um, the broad goals of this project are. Um, uh, have stayed the same, most basically unchanged since 2014. Uh, we want to provide an efficient and performant web engine, but the one that is still simple to use and is applicable to a wide range of embedded platforms and use cases. So far, we've been doing a pretty good job at that. The uh, current uh, advancements that uh, have been uh, achieved in last year, year and a half, uh, we have added uh, further um, uh, web standard support, WebRTC being the primary one. Um, uh, it enables uh, web-oriented remote, um, 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 remote connections and uh, uh, call services. Then we have uh, service workers, which are a brand relatively new idea, but in effect enables uh, web applications to run in a more uh, app-like way. Uh, giving uh, an increased control over the uh, networking um, operations it does and how it caches various data that it works with. Um, the next interesting one is image bitmap. Uh, this enables moving uh, various image operations into, uh, into um, separate threads through the uh, very common workers uh, mechanism. Uh, in addition, um, we've uh, continued polishing uh, EME and MSC uh, standard support. First one being um, uh, necessary for uh, uh, playback of encrypted content, and the latter being uh, a, um, uh, a more uh, manageable way of uh, handling web data, uh, media data, and controlling uh, through adaptable uh, playback uh, what quality of uh, media should uh, be displayed to the user. Uh, the WP project itself uh, has uh, also uh, managed to progress on various stability improvements. We have finally um, uh, started uh, publishing stable releases, which we do every six months. Uh, in addition, uh, we uh, backport uh, various security fixes as they come in to those stable branches. Um, we have also settled on uh, on a, a specific API um, that we can uh, that we have committed to support in the future. Uh, with performance, uh, we have made gains in uh, JavaScript uh, interpretation, uh, specifically on the embedded architectures that I've uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, there have been various memory usage improvements as well uh, all over the stack uh, from the web content handling itself to the um, to the graphics pipeline. We have started uh, dabbling with multi-threaded multi painting which would uh, bring uh, performance benefits on uh, devices that can offer us more uh, cores uh, to work on uh, in parallel. Uh, we have also managed to construct a system that fast tracks WebGL composition into a much more efficient thing uh, w uh, when uh, the WebGL content is displayed in full screen. Oops. 
talk a bit about uh, future developments, um, i.e. what uh, we're planning to focus on in the future. Uh, the graphics pipeline is still an area that we want to improve on a lot. And we feel we have a quite solid plan on how to, how to perform those improvements. Um, the current industry uh, of, well, industry area of, of uh, web browsers is pretty focused on, uh, on pushing more, more and more uh, work to the GPU. The GPU being um, a type of processor that is especially um, accustomed to such simple operations as painting can be. Um, uh, the benefit here is uh, two or threefold. Uh, we move more uh, uh, work off of the CPU where the web content is normally uh, handled uh, and basically task the GPU with, um, with handling all the painting uh, to the best of its possibilities. Um, uh, one specific area of interest is also Vulkan support. Vulkan being a uh, standard uh, published by the Kronos group uh, a few years back. Um, uh, Vulkan uh, over uh, more common and established standards like OpenGL and OpenGL ES enables much more room for uh, improvements and efficiency than what is currently available. Uh, with web standards, uh, we still have a lot of uh, things to, uh, to work on. WebRTC um, is uh, um, on, the, on, on our uh, target here. Uh, we have to improve standards compliance as well as interoper uh, interoperability, meaning here that we have to make sure that we have uh, the um, uh, we have the um, various browsers or implementations of WebRTC able to communicate between each other. Uh, um, covering MSC and EME, um, the implementations for the most part are complete. Uh, what still has to be um, uh, put, uh, what we still have to put our attention to is uh, being conformant to various industry standard uh, conformance suits. Uh, as for image bitmap, um, we are looking actively into uh, enabling more multi-thread usage improvements and uh, um, correlated with the previous slides about the graphics uh, pipeline improvements, uh, there are potential benefits that image bitmaps could, um, could also benefit from. Uh, okay. Uh, a lot of hype or a lot of interest has been put into various uh, modified realities or uh, extended reality being an umbrella term. Uh, it's an interesting uh, prospect. Um, there are a um, number of ways we could be embedding such extended reality content uh, or at least how we could be uh, working with such extended reality content. Uh, one option is to uh, to embed it uh, XR into the web content itself. It's kind of like if you have an image and you embed it into a website. Uh, the W3C organization is working on a proposal called WebXR, which would effectively enable this. Um, what we have dabbed with and what WPE would be most suitable for is uh, maybe invert that relation and uh, have web content uh, uh, embedded into an XR environment. Uh, effectively, this translates to web pages being displayed in XR environments, which could have interesting, uh, um, interesting use cases. Uh, that is all from me. Uh, QA is next. Uh, questions welcome now. Thank you very much, Jeanne. Um, do we have any questions from the floor? Uh, I'll throw a quick one at, at you. So um, I must confess that a bit of that was uh, beyond my pay grade. But what sort of people are you hoping to meet while you're here at IBC? And what are you hoping to discuss? And what are you offering them? Um, we provide a web engine 
so uh, our interest is a lot how they see web content and how they could envision that web content being embedded into their applications or use cases and whether we can adjust to that or whether we already have a solution for that. Okay. And you're saying you're part of a, a, a wider div uh, standards development or uh, program. Right, yeah. How many other organizations are involved in that work? Uh, the standards organization, um, W3C, is the big one. There are various organizations, from big ones to very small ones, from the four or five big ones, Google, Apple, Amazon, and so on, being involved there, to various small ones like Egalia, also making really viable contribution, contributions there. Uh, as for implementations, I was talked about the WebKit uh, project, uh, the main stakeholder there being Apple, but there are also smaller fishes of sorts there contributing just as well, like Egalia or Sony, for instance. Okay. Questions from the floor? Please. Hey, um, I actually have two questions. First one first. <laughs> uh, is uh, JavaScript engine support good enough to work with React, uh, AngularJS, or AmberJS application? Is it solid enough? Is it extensible, extensive enough? Yeah. Okay, uh, basically, Node.js, stuff like that, is a. Uh, is a I would turn me. Oh, React? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, the, uh, the JavaScript engine that we use is uh, one of the, the better standard compliant ones. So, yeah, the, yeah it's great. <laughs> and then, sec second question uh, Is it possible to run this browser on top of uh, pretty much uh, raw frame buffer? Um, it's not impossible. Now, there are various ways you can do it, uh, not to bore people going into too much technical details. We have more or less, uh, or we are working w uh, towards a more or less adaptable graphics pipeline that could potentially also target frame buffers uh, and more uh, raw methods of, uh, con of um, pixel displays of sorts. So, but uh, at the moment, it's kind of a on a back burner because we are focusing more towards improving things uh, with the current standards like OpenGL and the future ones uh, like Vulkan. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the floor with a question? If not, we'll say a big thank you very much to Jean, and you can find him on stand D29 here in Hall 14. Thank you very much. Thank you.